Hey everybody, it's me, Hugh, and uh, welcome to Liquid Lunch. Coming at you Tuesday, March 26th. We're starting a little early today, so Sandra's not here yet, but uh, we are uh, just uh, champing at the bit. Not chomping on the bit, we're champing at the bit uh, for our first interview, but uh, before we get to that, I'll just tell you who's coming on the show. Uh, Royal Ute will be here. He was on the show last week with Johnny Smash, and boy, he played that song, uh, Love We Need, and I just love that song, and uh, we're going to talk to Royal Ute some more about his music, and looking forward to that. Also, Morgan Toomes coming in from the Sexy Sisterhood. Um, I don't know what that's all about, but it sounds sexy. And uh, Jason Edwards, artist, musician, maybe a sculptor coming in. Uh, also, the Power Expo is coming up here in Toronto, and we've got Chantal McCallum and Susan Brady uh, coming in to talk all about that. But uh, we're going to start the show right now with Dr. John Stewart. And uh, Dr. John Stewart, this is incredible. There's so much great stuff we can talk about. I don't know where we should start. We can start with uh, free energy. We can uh, talk about miraculous healing technologies. Uh, you brought some uh, colloidal gold down for me today, which uh, I'm very thankful for. Thank you so much for doing that. Where can we start? What's topical and current that we can sink our teeth into? Well, I thought your listeners might like to be aware of what's happening right now in the cosmos, because this is a cosmic program. Yes. And uh, we want to know who we are in, in this cosmos. Uh, currently, right now, in the last week, there are two very important uh, pieces of information of cosmic significance. One is the Higgs boson, which was uh, discovered about a year ago, but only this last week was it verified as being the famous Higgs boson, also called the God particle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to talk about that and its relevance to cosmic science, to physics, and to metaphysics. Okay, so let's get in, because let me just say, when the Higgs boson was first announced, I thought, oh great, they spent umpteen billion dollars to find there's yet another smaller particle, mm -hmm. right? right? And I just thought, where is this going? Because we know it's some level it's just energy anyway. Well, exactly, and it really didn't seem like a big deal for most of us, because first of all, it's hypothetical, it's just another particle. But it turns out it's far more significant. That's why I want to introduce our topic today on that. And the other topic that's also important is the Planck telescope, which is orbiting right now, picking up the background uh, noise of the original universe. But we'll start with the Higgs boson. Okay. And uh, it's been called the God particle. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you what a boson is. Okay. Because that's an important way to start. If you look up. Uh, uh, Wikipedia, you'll see that a boson is one of two main particles. Most particles are bosons or fermions. Fermions. Fermions are electrons, for example. And no two electrons can occupy the same state. They have to be opposite to each other. Okay. And this is the basis of uh, some of the experiments in non-locality action at a distance. But bosons uh, they can, many bosons can occupy the same space, the same state. And in fact, that leads to some very important metaphysical consequences. Because okay. it means that these particles, and they're not really particles, they are fields. So it's the boson field, the Higgs field, the God field. Those are the various names that it's been called. And this pervades the entire universe. And we now know that this field emanates from a region of the lower dimensions called the cosmic crystalline lattice. Okay. And I, I'm doing a project right now with Professor Sarg from uh, York University. We're working on project with regard to the cosmic crystalline lattice, meaning that at that very low subatomic level uh, of around 10 to the minus 20 meters, there is a source, this field, and we think this is where the Higgs field emanates. And the particle is really a temporary manifestation of the field that pervades the universe. And we think that it is not only a, a carrier, but it carries information. And I have a special interest in information more than energy. Mm -hmm. uh, Information is that which influences the way um, matter forms. So it's information fields, mm -hmm. in form, how these fields cause the formation of matter 
and the world that we know. In fact, uh, one of my great teachers is a doctor from Cambridge, the presence of the past, Sheldrake, Rupert Sheldrake, mm -hmm. uh, came up with this term, the morphogenetic fields. That mm -hmm. was his theory. Now I think we have enough evidence that these fields are real. They give form and shape to the reality that we experience in everyday life. But more so, it brings us the information that seems to be stored in this crystalline lattice. And uh, I have a special interest in biographies of great savants and scientists and geniuses like Mozart. Mm -hmm. Mozart was getting his whole concerto downloaded in a fraction of a second mm -hmm. from somewhere else, in perhaps in these dimensions. He didn't write the concerto. It came to him and then he was able to write it, dictate it off, or copy it off from his brain. So I, th I think a lot of artists will say that they don't know where it comes from. It comes through them, right? Mm -hmm. True inspiration comes uh, like raindrops from another source. Mm -hmm. like we, we cannot use our, our little nanobrain minds to come up with new information because all we have is more of the past. Mm -hmm. we, we have to open ourselves and be in that state, sometimes called the theta state of consciousness, whereby we open ourselves to that new and new information. Okay. So we're talking about information fields. So that, does that deal with the Higgs boson? Well, okay, I have a question though. When you talk about it being not necessarily a particle, but the particle is really just the manifestation from the probability field. Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. uh, probability is a good way of saying it, yeah. Probably. So in other words, that, that, that the crystalline lattice is uh, is, is giving the probabilities and then when we collapse the wave function then we get the particle. We get the particle but the wave, the field is always there influencing our, our atoms and our electrons and our DNA yeah. and perhaps and even our thought and most importantly uh, our pineal gland right. that you and I talked about earlier and how important and precious our pineal gland and its associated neurological structures in the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain has many sub-brains within it, mm -hmm. all of them acting as modules. So the pineal module or the third eye down, seems to download a lot of that information. So we have that receiving apparatus that is our most precious possession. Out of that comes our inspiration and ideas and our love and affection. But they've been trying to dumb us down with fluoride in the water, which has been demonstrated to uh, calcify and uh, take the pineal gland offline. Yeah, just in the last few weeks I checked this out. I was always very skeptical about these conspiracy theories about fluoride, but in mm -hmm. fact, about 10 years ago, uh, I think it was a U.S. Research Council published a paper showing that uh, sodium fluoride is extremely toxic to many of our body organs, particularly the, f the pineal. And they are recommending, you know, four, four parts per million as being the upper limit of tolerability. That's a toxic level of yeah. sodium fluoride yeah. and the other fluorides. Yeah. So it does damage the pineal, and we, 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 shouldn't, we should be drinking water that doesn't have fluoride. And uh, one of my uh, projects is I make and sell colloidal generators for making colloidal mineral waters of silver, gold, magnesium, zinc, iron, etc. It turns out that silver uh, connects, uh, inactivates the chloride and the fluoride in water mm -hmm. and forms uh, silver chloride, silver fluoride, which are insoluble and can be removed. So when we take uh, colloidal silver, for example, there are many, many benefits, but one of them is the removal of fluoride from our bodies. Okay, great. So if you take like a tablespoon of, uh, or a couple of the colloidal silver water a day, you don't have to worry about drinking fluoridated water? Is that I would not say so. No, we, we, we should be stopping things at the source. Yeah. Not, not at the, at the end. Sure, yeah. but until yeah. that time, will the that damage be effective? may be done before the silver can get to it. Yeah. All right. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't rely on that. I think we have to take all possible steps to protect our most precious organs. Okay, boy. You know, we could talk all day, Dr. John, because uh, this is just the beginning of so much great stuff. Um, so just getting back to the Higgs uh, boson for a minute. So what are the implications for us on a day-to-day? 
living level of this uh, recent announcement um, confirming the uh, the Higgs boson? Well, it's it's just the beginning, but it's it's telling us what this this Higgs field really is about, and more and more scientists are now becoming uh, interested in the zero point energy fields mm -hmm. that, that exist in the sub-quantum dimensions. Quantum physics has taken us from classical realities that we now know as an illusion for the most part, has taken us to the quantum level which is around one nanometer, 0.1 nanometer where quantum effects begin to manifest like mm -hmm. tunneling, non-locality, etc. But now We've got to start looking even deeper to higher and higher frequencies, mm -hmm. to smaller and smaller dimensions in this cosmic crystalline lattice, which is the node points are 10 to the minus 20 meters of separation. And there is a crystalline lattice that apparently has a great solidity and vibrates like a crystal. Now, this is not the bottom of reality. The bottom of reality, the ground level or the floor, is 10 to the minus 35 meters, which is the Planck level. Mm -hmm. and, and there's apparently nothing beyond that. But we are in this intermediate, intermediate level between the Planck level mm -hmm. and the quantum level. Mm -hmm. And this is where we think all of this, all these morphic fields reside and emanate. Okay. All right. So let's, can we, uh, I, I, we're going to, let's talk about the Planck telescope and what that is revealing. And maybe we can tie that in to what we the can, Higgs boson is revealing. Strangely is enough, revealing. we can. I think it's a great... A coincidence. Let me get my uh, Planck information here. Oh. If you look at the Planck uh, pictures, which which I brought, but I can't find. And right by the now. way, the Planck telescope. Which, where is that? Is that orb orbiting it's, Earth? It's orbiting Earth. It's a unique telescope that is cryogenically cooled to almost uh, absolute zero. The reason being that it has to be picking up very, very, very small changes around. Right. zero and one and two degrees that are still residing out in the universe, still remnants of the Big Bang. And what they found, and I have the picture uh, somewhere, but I don't seem to be able to find it. Well, you'll see there's a, if the universe were totally random, mm -hmm. there would be, uh, there would be uh, uniformity, which is not the case. There is granularity, there is preferred areas like hills and valleys in the heat signature of the universe, showing that there's clumping. Uh, just like we have, uh, why do we have galaxies and black holes? Because there's clumping. Uh, the morphic fields are instructing and influencing matter to create this order, and, and order within order within order. So this, there's not total entropy. Entropy would be total randomness. There's not total order, but there's something in between called chaos. Chaos. So, yeah, so chaos. I have a, a great interest in, in chaos theory. I read that book. Yeah. However, um, a lot of these, I have a whole pile of book references. However, there's one book that came out just uh, last year that I'd recommend that you read. As, if you're going to read one book or start off, it's this book by David Wilcox. David Wilcox. And this, this synopsizes is an encyclopedic book. It's only 40. Forty dollars, thirty-five dollars. So uh -huh. it's it, for five hundred pages. This is a great introduction to a lot of these things: the nature of time, uh, how time is variable, uh, relativity, all, many, all of the great ideas that I've been talking about, including morphic fields. So this book, the Source Field by Wilcox, I highly recommend it. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh I want to get a copy right now. <laughs> okay, but now, uh, now I've been reading stuff that um, some people are saying now that the universe is really, with their uh, observations of deep space and with their investigations at the subatomic level, that some people are saying now that the universe is actually a hologram. Well, that's interesting. You should bring that up. In fact, Wilcox mentioned this. I was just rereading this last night. The Holographic Universe by Talbot yeah. is a book, a famous book, that introduced us to this idea, this metaphor, that the, that the a little part of the universe, namely us mm -hmm. or our DNA, mm -hmm. carries all of the information of the entire universe in all of time, past, present, future, all yeah. possibilities. Yeah. And you know, 
bizarre as that is, uh, this whole area is so bizarre that we have to have an open mind to all of these possibilities. And more and more experiments are being done to verify and validate these bizarre theories. Now, what does that mean for us on a day-to-day -day level? I mean, we're here, we just had the, the, the 2012 uh, point, which some people are saying, even though the world didn't end, but it was some people calling it a, a point of inflection in terms of where we're going as a species. And um, some people are saying that there's cosmic events happening that are causing our DNA to uh, change and that sort of thing. Some people are saying that maybe uh, evolution doesn't happen slowly like um, mm -hmm. Darwin uh, explained, right. but that Quantum. we quantum leaps. We have moments where we have rapid uh, mm -hmm. evolution and that some people are saying that we're headed to a point where we are, some people are saying now that human DNA is moving to, I don't know, 24 strands or more than the mm -hmm. whatever two strands that we have now. I think we've moved into a new era and, and Wilcox agrees with me, but to bring up this point, uh, the, uh, I'd like to remind you of another book, The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart, and she uh, gives us information about many experiments about the nature of time, but how the power of intention, how our intentional consciousness yes. interacts with matter. Okay. And Bell's theorem. Look it up on Wikipedia. Bell's theorem. Yeah. How the, 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 the experimenter interacting with the experiment changes, changes the nature of reality. So we have a part to play with our intention, whether good or bad. And I had a long discussion last week about evil. Is there evil in the universe, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. and my friends were saying, oh no, evil is just the absence of light. But I think evil is defined by the intention. And our intention has great power for creativity or for destructiveness. Okay. Um, I've got a real metaphysical question. Can I, can I ask you a real metaphysical question? No. I'd be delighted, yeah. Well, although I asked somebody last week, uh, and they uh, gave me a passage from Matthew to uh, reference. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nothing against Matthew. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, I kind of believe in the intention thing. When you, uh, I, I think people use that all the time in their lives, um, their intentions. But did you, I, I take it you read this book, The Intention well, Not only did I read the book, but I was first introduced to to this book and her er earlier book by a workshop I did here right in Toronto mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Lynn McTaggart when she came up to one of the conferences. So I was very impressed by her uh, eloquence in the background work that she had done, mm -hmm. although she's not personally a scientist. So I'd strongly recommend that and th how our intention affects uh, reality the outcome of reality. But she also mentioned something very, very bizarre. It's mm -hmm. called retroactive causality. We do an experiment now with intention and we can change the past. Can you give me an it's example? So bizarre. Well, she de describes experiments that were done where the, uh, the, 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 exp the subjects uh, in created an intentional focus and changed an experiment that was done 10 years previously. So that the results changed, the past was changed, retroactive causality. So I, I strongly suggest the audience look up retroactive causality on Wikipedia, or better still, get Lynn McTaggart's book, The Intention Experiment. Now what would happen, so would it even go so far as uh, say that experiment was written up in textbooks, right, that people had read describing the outcome of the experiment and they did those textbooks then change well, too? Well, the problem is that when you when you observe something, you lock in. They, they collapse the wave. They collapse the wave, so you lock it in. So there are circumstance. You have to be the right circumstances to be able to retroactively change the past. So and once you once you've had the observer effect, you lock it in, right. and it doesn't seem to work anymore. Yeah. So, so this is really the important things. You have you, you mustn't know. If you know, right. then you've collapsed the wave. Yeah. So the universe really is... Um, Leave it up to the universe and don't, you know, it's like work with the universe rather than against it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what can we take? Can you, can you sum up these, these uh, 
topical and current uh, things and what the Planck telescope is observing. Can you, you know, sum up something that people could take away from this interview in terms of, uh, hey, Sandra just got here. Hi, Sandra. I don't know if she's on camera good or not. Oh, where is she? That's okay, I'll just stick oh, with you. Over here. Okay. I'll stick with you. Anyway, there you are. Yeah. And this is Dr. John Stewart. Hi, John. Hi, John. Nice to yes, see you again. Yes, of course I've met John. Okay. John's an inspiration. I know. And okay. we're, we're just... We need uh, to get we're me on. Here no, we go. Well, we'll get you going. <laughs> 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 So we're just, you over. But we're, we're just trying to take away something that people can use in their lives, John, yeah. with this new knowledge, this new insight. What well, can people, because I mean, just, just that, that retroactive causality really means that we influence our experience of, of, of the world. Mm -hmm. Just like I just caused that jackhammer to start. That's right, yeah, it could be. <laughs> However, I have to say that because of my background in medical sciences as well as electronics and physics and quantum physics, I have a strong interest in healing. So one of my great inspirers was uh, Dr. Garber and his Bible of uh, Vibrational Medicine, which was the textbook for my course that I taught at U of T on vibrational medicine, quantum physics and consciousness. So. Uh, the, the, the application in our daily life is how we take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. mentally, physically, and nutritionally. Uh, so that for me is, is very important. That's the first step, is to take care of ourselves and each other, uh, health-wise, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So John, if I may ask, if, we could, if there's one thing we can do in our life today, or tomorrow, starting tomorrow, if there's one thing we can do to simplify it, what could a person do? In your opinion? I think the uh, most important thing we can do is to um, be aware that we are all one and to uh, tune into, open our heart and soul and mind to the fact that we are that we are all one. We are part of a of a holographic unity and mm -hmm. part also of this crystalline matrix mm -hmm. that pervades all of the universe. That we're not limited to this planet. And I think something else that's perhaps important. I've been reading lately the work of. Uh, Dolores Cannon, uh -huh. and, uh, and the me too. The the research, the information is far beyond mere anecdotal. It's it's quite clear that we have had many previous existences, including extraterrestrials. So extraterrestrials are our brothers, and and are part of who we are. So how can we realize that oneness, other than me being so close to you right now, we almost look like one. But other than, <laughs> other than that. John, how can we, how can we realize that? So, okay, I mean, how can we self-actualize that? We're, I mean, to say we're all one is wonderful, and I agree with you. How can we actually feel that? Well, is there it, something we can do? In our own way, with our own talents and abilities, like I'm here right now, uh, as, a, uh, as a, a missionary, uh, it's my mission to bring the best of what I have to humanity and to uh, uh, beings beyond human, that we all need each other, and that's my—that's what I'm here for today. So that's part of my being who I am right now in this moment. So the fact that you're a wealth of knowledge. Okay, John. Okay, so I was at an event, my band practice, on that's Saturday, fun. and I got into a discussion with one of my uh, friends, and. Um, you know, they were expressing their, uh, they actually got very agitated and angry, and I had to say, chill out, like, mm -hmm. you know. But we were talking about humanities, uh, like here we are, seven billion people on the planet, the oceans are polluted, coral reefs are dying, mm -hmm. uh, pollution in the atmosphere, nuclear um, radiation uh, poisoning the planet, and they were expressing uh, the idea that hum humanity is a cancer on the earth and we're gonna kill ourselves and, and we are the problem and we need to go away. And people who are trying to live their lives and trying to envision a future for themselves and they look around and they see all these problems and they're aware of it. I mean, what would you tell people who are dealing with this and who are maybe looking at, at all this and they're saying there's not really much hope or not much of a future? I would say there's not much hope for people who are stuck in their belief systems. I think education of young people, young people should be knowing all about this stuff. 
-hmm. shouldn't be waiting till our 40s and 50s and 60s to be reading it and learning. It's mm -hmm. Young people in high school should be given, instead of, this is the new religion, this is the new uh, knowledge of the universe of who we are, and they should be growing up. This should be their pablum. Okay. And they wouldn't pollute the planet 10, 20 years from now. They, they would have a, a social and spiritual consciousness, a spiritual intelligence to take care of ourselves and, uh, and our home, which is this planet. Well, you know what I think, um, if I may add, what I think is, is uh, in addition to the information that you have and that you share with everybody, is not even, I mean, that's one component of it, is the information, <clears throat> excuse me, but to me, what's really relevant, John, is not just what you deliver, but how you deliver it. That's it's right. the aspect of compassion, it's the aspect of authenticity, it's the aspect of love, mm -hmm. universal love. And that's where I think the message, that's where, that's where I think we can actually really bring it home and make it real, is through that component of feeling yeah. the love. Would you agree with that? I agree that it's a multifaceted uh, growth program. We, 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 we need to take care of ourselves, our physicality at a 3D and even a 2D level, our biochemistry, otherwise we get sick. We need to take care of our, of our education, our thoughts. You know, the power of thoughts can, can cause sickness. So we, we, children should be taught all of these things. So by the time they're 30, 40, 50 years of age, they, they have the ethics and, and the intelligence to take care of the planet and themselves and each other. So can we clean up the oceans? Can we clean up all the radioactivity? Yeah. Well, we also have a, a great collaborator, namely Gaia, who yeah. has the inherent self-healing properties of Gaia, which mm -hmm. uh, you, you, we'll be going beyond that, right? There's a balance here. Yeah. I think we've created an imbalance, but it can be, the tipping can be put back in the other direction, to quote Al Gore. Okay, great. So there's so much that we can, um, that people can find out, so much we talked about today, but... You've got a website where people can access some of the work you do, some of the products that you uh, provide for people. Can you uh, just tell people yeah, where they can... I have can... a very extensive website on many of my products. It's uh, biophysica.com. So I mostly devices for improving uh, our health mentally and physically. Uh, so I've invented devices that, uh, that grow hair on bald heads that stimulate the pineal really? gland, that shrink tumors. <laughs> so many different, if I see a need, I will find a way to meet that need. Whoa, that's incredible. We got a picture right now. So those are the colloidal generators. That's one of my, one of my devices. That's I just what? The widest range of colloidal generators from pocket size, the smallest in the world, to the biggest industrial wow. generators for bottling plants. Yeah. Okay, great. So people can find out wow. more at that website, biophysica.com, right, Dr. And you John? Can, and, just, and just so that we heard this correctly, you can actually grow hair on the head. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, have a, I, I have customers in Mexico who are having a franchise all over Mexico with my devices. Whoa. So growing growing so hair for Mexico. Do you want to sample? You want to try that? I, I, I would be willing. Can we do that? We could bring it on the show sometime. Why don't we do that? And as long as you sit under it. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind. Okay, so why don't can we? Is that outrageous? No, it's not outrageous well, at all. It has to be outrageous, otherwise we wouldn't be interested. Right? Exactly. <laughs> otherwise, it won't go viral. So uh -oh. okay, okay. So you know what? We're gonna have to plan that. Okay. I'm holding you. Actually, guys you know, I love this conversation, John, and I would love to have you back and. Uh, uh, get into some of this stuff in more detail. So thanks for Wonderful. coming on Thank today. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. Thank you for doing everything you're doing and being such an inspiration. Amazing. I don't know. What? John? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Okay. So thanks, John. Biophysica.com. We've, uh, we've got a little commercial uh, we're going to play now uh, from John uh, just to give you some more information. And then we're going to continue because Royal Ute is in the house and i'm looking really, you forward to hearing those songs as liquid lunch continues and made it plug that in and um we'll show you see that's the magnetic yeah, uh, it's, it's turn it that way the call oh. that way yeah and then i put it down closer the the, the look, look at that wow eh so the field is quite high, actually. Amazing, oh. amazingly high. Holy smokes! Yeah, yeah.
Look at that, eh? Mm -hmm. Is this reset? That's on-off. Oh, no, right, that on yeah. uh, and what exactly does that it do? It detects the magnetic The magnetic field. pulse, okay. see? That would be, I'm driving it from, from here. Yep. Uh, 140 hertz. Mm -hmm. um, now, if we take it down, 70, 50, 50. Oh, look, yeah, see, look, look, see? Look at the hertz, see, look at that. That's 10 hertz. 10 hertz? Mm -hmm. And the, 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 look so it's closer. You see, at lower frequency, the field is uh, not so uh, Not as strong. Extended. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now it just went up? Yeah, so it'll be around here, exactly. Count that, count that, let me count that. Yeah, let's see? It's real high. Now, and, and if what you are want you doing the internal, now? it's got an internal oh, uh, good. frequency, just Schumann, uh, Schumann range. Uh, automatically scans through a range internal versus, and I added that on at your request. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, so the 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 external will be going towards uh, where the was external the external is anywhere here. It's That's like right. A, a, that that okay. generator that you wanted yep. to. Uh, and it works. And it works. Oh, perfect. I made that cable specially for you. Thank you very much. Oh, look at that. I know. Nice, eh? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is is um, so the suite. Do you have the, do you do you have the um. The, the list of the frequency sweeps that you use for for the, the, the internal, right? Internal. Okay. So let me see. The internal is is is. You see, if you look at this. See, let's show you this. See this right here. Let me see this right here. Now, where's the high one here? Where's, where's the high one? Does this frequency go higher? Or go a little higher. Now, is it internal? The switch. Uh, is it internal or external? Oh wait. Internal, external. See. Watch this. It's so, on external now. So I'm gonna push it. A little lower, right? I'll show you. It's external is 10, right? That's 10. Internal. See? Internal sweeping. So the internal is based upon frequencies he set already in there, doing a natural sweep, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But now if I click on the external, mm -hmm. it's going to use a frequency from here. Okay, so when you and use it's your frequency go through here. generator, and that's you it, would use it on the external. That's the picture of that on the oscilloscope. Exactly. See? I can, uh, yeah, so that's a picture of it. So if I change the frequency faster. higher, it'll go faster. Look at that, eh? Yeah. And that's 50. 50. 50 hertz. Nice, eh? Is that the right amount? 